does. Okay. Well, why don't we turn to our next question. What are some fixed costs in our budget, and how do they contribute to this budget stalemate? Well, I think, I think you have, uh, first of all, you have bonds that are sold. Those are the first and foremost. And uh, as you know, uh, bonds have uh, first priority to be paid off, the debt service on the bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the bonds relate to infrastructure projects that are needed in the state. And the state has uh, uh, sells general obligation bonds to build uh, transportation systems, the uh, school system, school bonds are the, probably the biggest uh, set of bonds. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, a big chunk of the budget is tied up in paying off bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, another, another part of the bu budget that's, I'd say, tied up is in state personnel cost, mm -hmm. and that's a fixed cost. That's about 200 and some thousand state employees. Yeah. Uh, but actually the budget, uh, most of the budget doesn't go to the state employees. It does. Uh, most of the budget goes to schools. Uh, uh -huh. Over half the budget goes to your local school system, and that is probably the biggest initiative produced fixed cost, which is Prop 98 that says 40% and a formula to allocate the money has to go to a K-12 elementary school system. Uh -huh. So we get tied down, as I said, quite a bit. Yeah. What about our prison system? Uh, the prison system is a big is a, probably the biggest single increasing area of the state budget more than any other area and uh, it's an area that uh, coming from my background as a county supervisor which has a you know county jails mm -hmm. and a criminal justice system I know a little bit about I think the the state of California has the worst recidivism rate in the United States about uh, three out of four inmates that are in the state prison are back in state prison after uh, two to three years. Yeah. And that, that, that only increases the number of inmates. And we don't have a good um, jobs and um, probably uh, drug rehab, alcohol rehab uh, system in California. That's what we need to do to reduce our prison costs. When I started, it was like $27,000 per inmate. Now, now it's $60,000 per inmate per year. And that's just like you said, three or how long? How many years? Just three and a half three years. Half it's years. gone up because we have a federal judge ordering the state what to do with the prison system. Uh -huh. And every time he makes an order, the cost goes up and up and up. Wow. And also, then we've got this three strikes and you're out thing. So. Well, that has <laughs> has an impact. Yeah. And um, it not only applies to violent uh, offenders that commit felonies, but nonviolent felonies. So. So it didn't distinguish. Uh, so as a result, there's a lot of people that have petty thefts that have built up uh, a series of crimes and led to having three felonies, and they're in prison uh, for 25 years to life. Yeah. At sixty thousand dollars a year, <laughs> that's a lot of meals and that's a lot of nights that we have to put them in the inn. All right. And what's going on, of course, is we're running out of room in our prisons. I mean, we we, we are <laughs> sending prisoners to other states yeah. on trains. Yeah from Jeez. California and paying for it. Yeah. Um, what about our pension system? The pension system uh, in California for not only the state employees but for some of the local governments who contract with the state pension system is run by CalPERS mm -hmm. and uh, California uh, Pension Program. Yes. Uh, there are, in my opinion, there is a need for pension reform. Mm -hmm. uh, pension reform should include uh, uh, some reform about increasing the pensions, uh, uh, spiking the pensions, the actual amount that's needed to fund the pensions. In the past, when the economic situation in the stock market decreased, uh, that required the state government to put more money into the pension. Right. So I think we have to have a more conservative approach with our pension system and maybe uh, look at uh, some changes to uh, avoid people that receive uh, extremely large pensions from the, from the state and from the local government. Mm -hmm. So we need some reform there. Right. What are some areas of the governor's budget proposals that you think are a fantasy? Well, he's got some, um, I'm not sure he believes in these things, <laughs> uh, but he made the proposal. Sometimes the budget turns into a negotiating ploy, uh -huh. and I think in, in Governor Schwarzenegger's case that uh, considering he likes to play poker a lot, 
<laughs> I, think, I think there's uh, a little bit of poker playing on his part. Uh, for example, uh, he proposed to eliminate uh, the in-home support services for disabled people. Uh -huh. uh, 650,000 people uh, would not receive uh, in-home support services. Well, I think that's fantasy because if only five to six percent of them ended up uh, having, because they weren't taken care of in their homes, had to go to nursing homes, right. that would eliminate all the, the savings that you would try to achieve there. Uh -huh. Likewise, likewise, the CalWORKs. Mm -hmm. uh, CalWORKs is a federal program where two-thirds of the money comes from the federal government. Uh, the cost of CalWORKs has actually gone down in the last 15 years uh -huh. since uh, uh, the reform that took place in the 1997. So uh, with two-thirds of the money come from the federal government, what happens if you eliminate that? Well, you, first of all, you lose yeah. that federal money. Right. And uh, secondly, um, what happens is the county governments have all these people go on general assistance, and rather than the state paying for it, the county pays for it. And I like to pay, point out that the taxpayer pays for it either way. Yes, So, right. So uh, I think that's a, that's a misnomer of savings there. So uh, one of the problems with the governor's budget as proposed is that the governor's budget actually reduces the amount of federal funds coming into California by five billion dollars. Uh -huh. And it would cost 450,000 jobs in the public and private sector. That's a little bit too steep a price mm -hmm. for what he's trying to achieve. We have to work at a different budget and that's what we're trying to do in the state legislature right now. Okay. How does our tax system contribute to our budget problems? Well, I think the tax system in California, uh, if you, we have a binder in the Revenue and Taxation Committee, which has all the, the exclusions, the extensions, and so forth, uh, loopholes mm -hmm. that have been approved over the years. And like I said, a lot of times these loopholes are approved at midnight during the budget sessions <laughs> uh, that some particular group lobbies uh, for a uh, uh, tax uh, loophole. Mm -hmm. And that happens frequently in the budget process. In fact, the Revenue and Taxation Committee this year, we had $6 billion worth of loopholes that were proposed by various legislators. And, uh, some, people here, call, some people call those incentives. Well, you know, call them incentives, <laughs> call them loopholes. But I'd like to point out that we have a $17 billion deficit. Uh -huh. And uh, the way I do it, my math is 17 uh, plus six equals, uh, you know, uh, 23 right. billion. So it makes the, the deficit even worse. Yes. So, so I think uh, if we're gonna talk about uh, the tax code, I would favor simplification. There was a tax commission last year and they came up with a, what I call consumption tax. And um, the accountant industry, other people, everybody said it was a lousy idea uh -huh. and it wasn't adopted. I guess no particular group actually stood up at the hearing and said, we like this idea. Uh -huh. But I think the idea of reforming the tax code has to take place in California. Yeah.